Here at Wine Spectator, we taste more than 15,000 wines each year. It's a huge challenge to organize and taste that many wines. I'm Bruce Sanderson, the tasting director, and I'd like to show you how we do it. Right now, I'm in the tasting offices in our New York headquarters. In order to ensure a level playing field for each wine, our tastings are always blind. Next, I'll meet you in the mailroom where we receive the wines. Our mailroom crew takes delivery of 2 to 20 cases of wine every day from producers and importers around the world. We've got five tasters here in our New York office. Each of us reviews wines from a specific region such as South Africa, Austria, Spain, Burgundy, Chile and even New York State. The mailroom crew hands it off to one of our tasting coordinators. Counting all of our offices, we have eight coordinators on staff. Here's Alison Napius, one of our New York tasting coordinators. She's also a taster. Hi, Alison. Hi, Bruce. What's the first thing you do when you get new wines? Well, we have a lot of wines to organize each year, so the first thing I do is record all of them in our database. We include information like the winery, the appellation, and the vintage, and at this point, we have almost 200,000 wine reviews in our database. You'll notice that we have two bottles of each wine. We always request a backup in case the first bottle is corked or flawed. Once the wines are in the database, we store them until the tasting. Allison's going to show you the cellar, and I'll check in with you later. This is our main cellar for wine storage, but we also have a few freestanding units in the tasting room. As you can see, all the wine here is organized by region and then by grape type. Here we have the Austrian wine section, which Kim Marcus is in the middle of tasting right now. All told, he'll taste about 500 Austrian wines this year. Let's go into the tasting room. We taste wines blind to keep everything on an equal footing. The taster knows the vintage and either the grape type or region, but never the price or producer. We feel this keeps our reviews fair and objective. Just before the tasting, I assign a unique code to each wine, which we use to track the wine through the blind tasting. The code goes on the bottle and in the computer and also on the bag that we use to cover the bottle. Now, occasionally a wine has a distinctive bottle shape. If so, we transfer it into a neutral wine bottle or else directly into a tasting glass. Next, meet Kim, who's already started his tasting. Hi, I'm Kim Marcus, and I taste the wines of southern France, Greece, the table wines of Portugal, and Austria. You can identify my reviews because they include my initials KM. Most flights include 20 to 30 wines of similar types. This one encompasses 24 Austrian leasings from the 2006 vintage. The first wine is a non-blind benchmark that I've scored in a previous tasting. I used it to calibrate my palate when I started this flight. Also somewhere hidden in this flight is what we call a ringer. A ringer is a wine that I've scored in a previous tasting. That way I can make sure my scoring is consistent. When we taste, we evaluate wine based on some intrinsic flavors and characteristics as well as typicity. For example, in this flight, I'm looking for some nice fresh fruit flavors backed up by acidity. Right now, I'm on my fourth wine. So let's see what it tastes like. Mm. Well, there's that nice peach. With some good citrus notes. And some really nice spicy elements. The bags stay on until the scores are finalized on the computer. Once the bags come off, the scores cannot be changed. That's our guarantee to you that our reviews are fair and objective. While it's going to take me about two hours to go through these wines, so I better get cracking. For us, this is a really involved and exacting process. It's a challenge, but we're passionate about it. We hope our reviews help you find wines you like. Mm -hmm.